G'day guys, it's Chris here from the Ultimate Recycler. Uh, this is part two of salvaging what we can out of an 1880s or 1890s cottage before the excavator comes in and just destroys the rest and sends it to landfill. Um, I'll link part one under here and up the top. And we never intended on this being a part two because, uh, you know, I was just going to salvage a few doors and things and be off. But I've ended up ripping up more of the floor in fact, we're going to do the three main rooms, and I've got my favourite worker here, Christine. Hello. She's flat out ripping up floorboards, having a ball, and have a look at the state of this house. Look what the white ants have done to that beam, and lots of other places. I said, if you haven't seen part one, follow the link and go and have a look. There's been white ants through the old lining boards. They've been in the ceiling. Uh, the place is being demolished, and this block will be developed. Uh, so we're ripping up the floorboards. I wasn't going to go to the trouble, but it's such an old house and these boards, as you'll notice, they're not tongue and groove. They're quite thick, heavy hardwood and I think they're iron bark. So I'll try and get a close up of a piece and maybe any of you that know your timbers can have a look. Um, but it's lovely, straight, heavy boards. They're like planks really. And we'll see if we can get a good look shot of that in the sun. It's rough sawn. I don't know what the grain really looks like. There are glue remnants on it, unfortunately. And there was a couple with a little bit of white ant damage, but most of these are uh, original early hardwood. I'd suggest they were milled in the district from ironbark forests. It's very heavy, and I cut a few with the handsaw, and it's quite hard. But look, I didn't want it to be burned. I didn't want it to be broken up by the excavator. Whether I use it or whether we sell it, I'm not sure, but it just had to be saved. So we're having a bit of fun. We're finding a few treasures. Let's come and have a look out here. I was hoping to find some bottles, but all I've found is fragments. Uh, Christine's found a bone, and we have no idea what that's off. This looks like it may have been an inkwell or a top of a bottle, although I think that's the base. That could be Victorian. It's pretty early. That's a piece out of a draft set. And that is a base or a side piece of a cod bottle, a marble bottle, and they're what I'm really looking for. Uh, an old dolly clothes peg, not sure what that is. Looks like it's brass. Uh, there's also an old shoe. Don't think that's quite Victorian. It looks like it's a canvas. Early 1900s, it's been well worn. Uh, now I have got all the furniture out, and those of you that saw part one, there was a lot of furniture left in here that really was in no value to me but I didn't want to see it going to landfill. And I'll just go through here if I don't fall through the floor. Uh, we are going to rip the floor up in this room too, just by the way, because I've rolled the carpet back and they're nice old heavy hardwood boards there again. The rest of the house is more modern pine boards. I don't know if I'll go to the trouble of saving them. I've only got a few days and I really don't have time to spend here, but you don't have an opportunity to pick up you know, early hardwood timber floorboards uh, every day so these these were the furniture look the bits of furniture i didn't want them at the shop it's not something i really wanted to be bothered with selling but i didn't want to see them go to landfill so i threw a, an ad on our local facebook groups and uh, a lady's coming back to get the recliner she's also going to take that cupboard and that dressing table and possibly the single beds another lady turned up and grabbed the coffee table so i'm really pleased that i've saved this from being trashed with the house as I said, I could have walked away and not worried about it, but you know, I just I've got to save this stuff going to the tip when some people can have it a use for it. Uh, I did grab some of the carpet runners for our shed at home. I've taken various other things. Have a look at part one again. That cupboard, the lady, another lady's going to come and grab. Don't know if we can get rid of the stove, but we've only got a few days. We'll try and save everything we can, uh, and in the meantime, we'll keep rescuing these floorboards and see if we can find some good treasures. I'll show you if I find anything. Okay, stop the press. What have we got here? <laughs> we have bottles. <laughs> Christine's been working over this side, which I thought I'd looked under before, but I couldn't see this far. And look at that. That's a, a cod bottle with the top just broken off. There's a big square one next to it. And there's one around here, um, and it looks intact. Is that a marble bottle too? No. Ooh. But that, I don't know what the other that one is. That little top there. That one's got some writing on it. That's what we like to see. Yeah. That little top is the top of a chemist. I know that's broken, but these are nice early stuff. These, hang on, what's back under here? Looks like there's one oh, in here. Yeah. 
That's oh, broken. The top's broken again. It's possible that because the kids back in the day used to collect or knock the tops off these bottles to collect the marbles, sometimes you find a whole heap with all the tops knocked off. Anyway, um, exciting. We better get the next few boards off and we'll give you a better look. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. It looks like the bottle gods have been cruel to us again. <laughs> uh, that's a local Nagambi, which is our hometown where we are. Elf bow cod bottle minus the top. So around about 1920, 1910 maybe. Here's another one. You can see it says Nagambi. Um, and that's much the same, except more of it's missing. Uh, I have a scratch around here. That's the top of an early chemist. Now this one here is complete. Can you see this? It's not a marble bottle, unfortunately. But it is complete. And it's an earlier bottle. Registration number. It's actually an ammonia bottle and it should say scrubs. You see that? Scrubs. There is an S there. So at least we've got an old bottle that's complete. But it's just such a pity that it's not a marble bottle. What else we've got? There's another one under this beam here. That's a broken eucalyptus. And I said in the first video that it would have been a Basisto. This one is a Basisto. It's an older one though. This is early 1900s and the top's missing. This one here. On that side, oh, another broken cod bottle. That's different though. Oh, that's interesting. That would say E. McDonald. No, Lemonade E. McDonald Nagambi. He had a hotel here in the 1920s and 30s and he sandblasted on the back of a plain cod. It was not plain, it just says made from pure carbonic gas. So they're very rare. I've only seen one complete in those, even though it's just sandblasted. That's disappointing again. Let's hope there's more under here. Maybe the kids have smashed all the tops. Oh, look. Oh, marble. That's a good sign because that is the marble out of a cod bottle. It would have sat in the top chamber just up there. So to find one of these is really good because it probably means that the kids weren't smashing to collect the marbles. They might have just been had their tops knocked off throwing them under the house. So we might find a complete one yet. Oh, what's this? The last bottle collector? <laughs> Actually, that's a bird, isn't it? It looks like it. Pretty gross, but maybe that was a dodo. It looks like an angry bird. <laughs> the house is pretty old. Maybe this is the where the last dodo came to rest. <laughs> so we'll have a bit more of a scratch around. And we'll turn the camera back on if we find something else complete. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, there's one there. Yeah. It's not a cod bottle, but it's an ink, a little cabin ink. That's pretty awesome. I like finding those. I get five dollars for those easily in the shop. So known as a cabin ink, rent about 1900. So excellent. We've got something to take home. We better keep scratching away. See you soon. Alrighty, we're under a few more bottles. This one's just a little essence. Not very exciting, but it is a fairly old one. And is there anything else over here? I didn't see anything. No, just some bricks. And I can see that there's some newer bricks and a timber wedge under there. So that's where they've done the kitchen floor. So the extent of our bottle collecting on this side of the house is running out. But have a look at this. This is exciting. I can see that one now. All right, everyone needs to cross their fingers, please. I know. We'll start with the little ones that are complete. Yeah. That's a little perfume. Quite an old one, not damaged. That may even go purple in the sun. So we'll wash these up at the end of the video and show you what we found. This is a cute little one. It's a medicine bottle. Um, it's got Melbourne on it. That's a Iona. I've heard of that one before. It's a trademark. But I don't think I've had one of these quite so early. Would have had a label on the back. Pretty happy with that one. Now, oh, hang on. Another little pill bottle there. Not very exciting. There's another bottle under the bearer okay. too. Oh, okay. This one... This one's a eucalyptus oil again. No name on this one. Still got the cork in it. Pretty early, about 1910 probably. But yeah, no name, so not worth very much. Uh, okay, this one here. Come on, universe, give me some good, <laughs> good vibes. Move that bit of timber. It looks like part of the top's on it at least. Oh, geez, it's wedged in. Come on, baby. Well, the bottom's complete. Oh, oh bugger. Shame. Top's off it. 
tops off it. It's another Nagambi one. You get a good view of the embossing there. The bow and arrow trademark. Elf bow, even though it's got a D on the end, it's just pronounced bow. I presume it's French. Nagambi. That's a real shame. That's the most complete one we've had. These were a lemonade bottle. They sometimes say lemonade on the back. And it's usually got his initials on the bottom. AIB. Yeah, that's disappointing. Come on, you, you didn't all cross your fingers, did you? <laughs> well, I don't think we've got any more bottles this side. There's a blue one further oh, on. Oh, is there? Whereabouts? Further Castor oil, I oh, think. Oh, look at this. Just sitting on the top. Is and it that's, blue? Yes, that's complete. A blue castor oil. Uh, sometimes these are embossed and they're quite valuable. This one looks like a plain one. It'll wash up and look beautiful. Actually, if we hold it up against the, the wall, you can see how blue it is. Oh, yeah. So we'll wash that one up and show you. So we've got a couple of good keepers. But, um, yeah, we just couldn't quite score a marble bottle. All right, well, we'll keep searching. We'll try the other side of the house. And uh, we've finished the floorboards on maybe one more. And we'll lift some up in the other room. So Christine's just ducked down the street to grab some lunch. Uh, we've decided we probably won't worry about these last few boards here. There's a lot of shorter bits and some are a little bit damaged. So we can look underneath as far as the wall goes and it's quite clean under there. There's no bottles at all. So uh, the last room we've got is this other area which was like a lounge living room. At least it was in recent times. And I've rolled the carpet up and there are some nice old boards here as well. And there's no glue on these ones. Uh, there has been numerous patches, and that was, looks like it was the hearth to a fireplace, which has been boarded over. So um, we'll dig a few boards up here. There has been some damage, and there's a section replaced there, uh, and a little bit of old newspaper stuck there. I wonder if we can find a date on it. Uh, but there's a lot of short bits in here as well, and there's also been some white ant damage through here. Um, it's extremely hard wood, so I'm surprised the white ants got into that, but that was a long, long time ago, I would say. There's been a section replaced against the edge of the house, and over this side, they've actually filled the gaps between the boards. There must have been some shrinkage or something. So we're not going to get... We won't do the whole floor, but we will rip a few of these middle ones up because they're such nice... It's a bit hard to see with the sun coming through there. There's such nice timber, nice grain... Again, if you know what the timber is, let me know. It's certainly a hardwood. It's very heavy. Um, and it's... Uh, oh, there's more newspaper here. Now, that would date pretty early, but I can't see any dates on it. So anyway, we'll um, rip a few of these up. Hopefully, we find another nest of bottles. Um, that would be really exciting. But uh, if nothing else, we'll get a few nice boards and we'll finish up. We certainly decided against the lining boards. We did try and take a few off. But a lot of them are damaged behind, and you can see all those patches. They're just put over basically holes. Christine pulled one patch off here, and that was what was behind it. It was just all rotten. So, and the other thing is there are lining boards behind the cladding on this side, but we think that may be asbestos cement sheeting, so we're going to leave that well alone. So lining boards will leave, um, and look, they're not as... They're not as scarce. There are opportunities to pick up lining boards around the place. It just represents too much work for, for short bits of board here. And as I keep saying, I'm lacking time. But you certainly do not find old floorboards like this very often. So I think it's worth the effort rescuing these. Uh, the other thing, I did mention all the furniture. Most of it's spoken for, which is great. Uh, I have ripped up the aluminium uh, little strips that went over the edge of the carpet. And I found a few extension cords. I will be chopping cords off various other things. I wouldn't be a scrapper if I didn't grab all the wire I could. Uh, we didn't find anyone to take the stove, unfortunately, and it's not worth it for scrap metal. It is hardwired. It's not... Um, you can't just unplug it, so that's a bit of a problem. Anyway, we can't save everything, but we had a bit of fun looking for bottles. Hopefully there's another little episode of bottle discovery left. We'll have some lunch next, and we'll then start lifting a few more boards. Lunch has been and gone. We've started lifting boards here. Christine's just having a scratch around the hearth area where there would have been originally been a fireplace. What's that? Bone. Oh. 
because uh, quite often you can find coins around fireplaces and I know some guys with metal detectors always when they're finding an old house they always detect around the, where the chimney is it's amazing how many times you find relics and coins uh, so this room is a disappointment as far as bottles go we only found one fragment which again is a Nagambi cod bottle but just a part of it interestingly the bow and arrow trademark was only used from about 1900 the earlier Nagambi cod bottles had an AIB monogram and yet this house dates back before that so I'm not sure how those bottles got under here but this has been this room has been re sort of fixed at various times if you look here they've got wedges under the bearers fairly modern wedges so someone's certainly been under here and repaired it anyway no more bottles for this adventure no but we've treasures. we've had fun no treasures over there no, not gonna get rich today no well we're rich with enjoyment we are. <laughs> uh just before we finish up because that used to be a fireplace we're going to knock that panel off there and just see what's behind it is it going to come off it's coming off very good. Rip into it. All right. <laughs> oh, what have we got behind here? <laughs> Don't fall down. Oh, there, we there we go. There's the old fireplace. We were hoping it was stacked full of marble bottles, but you know that's probably a dream as you. A couple of dead birds have fallen down the chimney. No evidence of Santa Claus's footprints. So I don't think it's actually been boarded up that long. Anyway, no treasures. We shall get the last of these boards off this side and I'll have to go and get my trailer and I think we'll call this job complete. Well, I'm back here again today at the cottage. I can't seem to leave the place alone. There's only a couple of days before it's going to be demolished. Now, all the weatherboards are gone off the front. I let my, a friend of mine who's a builder know that there was some building materials need saving and he didn't get the side ones because they're more modern. But the old weatherboards he was showing me that they're the original uh, rough sawn hardwood weatherboards and he does a lot of work on older buildings so he said we can't let them go to waste so he went to town now it does show the back of the lining boards and then this part of the house they're actually not too bad so even though i keep saying i'm not going to take them i might try and knock a few off as i said this job i just keep being drawn back here because i don't like wastage i have uh i was talking to rick the builder and he said it's worth saving uh, the glass from the front door because it was the door itself was uh, not very structurally safe it was quite wobbly but I just took the glass out before he said it's really really hard to match that glass um, and he said you can pretty well ask your price whatever price you want so I'll take those four panes back to the shop and I might put I Rick suggested $30 each uh, so certainly they were saving and quite profitable I was always planning to get the Art Deco doorknob and I grabbed the latch from inside as well. So what else have I been doing? Well, we've stopped with the floors as you saw in the last little bit. Uh, I might try and knock a couple of weather, uh, lining boards off, probably from over that side because they looked okay beside the window. Um, the guy has turned up who was going to claim the heater, so the heater's gone and what else has he done uh, i'm just trying to walk on these beams while we're going so a bit hard to think walk and talk to you guys at the same time all right so i don't think there's anything else i'm certainly not going to worry with these modern pine floorboards i don't have time and they're not that valuable uh, some of the furniture is still yet to be picked up but some of it has gone but i am going i brought my ladder back and i'm going to get up on the roof and I noticed that, I don't know if it was Rick or someone else came and they've taken the sheets of tin off the back of the top section. So I want to have a look in there. I might clip out some of the wiring. The bricks around the top of the chimney have gone. I don't remember if they were decorative ones or not, but someone obviously thought they were worth saving. So it's kind of good that the words got out a little bit just to a few people that use materials so that we can save things. Uh, I have got a guy coming to pick up these cupboards the lady that sort of said she wanted them is pulled out and that's the trouble with facebook marketplace you often get people that uh, renege or don't turn up or just string you along uh, i have been taking brass taps off because uh brass is such a good price at the moment but look these will sell for better than brass value that's quite a good tap so i'll grab a bit of the wiring i'll grab some copper pipes where they're accessible outside i might lever the kitchen sink off i've got some taps out of the laundry and the bathroom 
There's the heater gone, the flue's gone through there. So I'm going to climb up on the roof next and we'll just see what it looks like inside. Okay, there's inside the gable. It's been insulated. In fact, it looks like there's been some work done in more recent years with some insulation paper there. Uh, it's very, very dirty. There's been rats and possums through here. I can actually smell it from here. I'm glad I didn't start trying to pull some boards off the ceiling inside because it would have been a hell of a mess. So I'm going to try and just clip out some of this wire, only because wire's worth so much at the moment, and it's easy to get on into there. I'll have to be really careful just to stand on the cross beams because I'm sure I would actually go through the lining boards, and I really don't want to have a 12 foot fall. In fact, I don't want to have an any foot fall. There's some nice heavy wire there where the power comes in. The fuse box was down there. So I'll grab a little bit of wire while I'm up here. There's nothing else I want from up here. It looks like someone's grabbed the lead uh, flashing from around the base of the chimney and they've knocked off the top chimney bricks. Uh, the galvanized iron is nice long sheets. Um, it's almost worth saving, but it's a lot of work and I don't know what's underneath it. There's some tech screws and there's some roofing nails. Just too much work to be bothered with at this stage. If I had another couple of weeks, I'd probably do it. I've only got a couple of days and I've devoted more time to this job this week than I had planned. So we'll just clip a bit of wire while I'm up here. I'll grab a few more plumbing fittings down below. And uh, I think we're just about done. Well, that wasn't a fun job. A few of these beams aren't structurally very safe, but we've got all the wires clipped out. Uh, there's quite a lot over it. I've already chucked quite a bit down the side. Uh, we'll go and pick it up from the side part, footpath in a minute. Uh, and I'll take it all back and weigh this up for you, just to give you an idea of how much how much worth of wire there is. It won't be a great deal, but look, it's um, always worth grabbing when it's free. And there is an earth wire here, which will actually go as number two copper, which pays a lot better than insulated copper. So we'll weigh it up just out of interest's sake. But I'll just chuck this last lot down onto the ground, and we're done up here. And just as well, my knees are sore. And my nerves are a little shaky after crawling through there. It's good to be back on terra firma. Um, I've been, I picked up all the wire that I threw down here to know in the van. I've been grabbing some exposed copper pipe and I dragged a length out from under the house that went to, I think was a gas heater next to that open fireplace. So I think I've finished down this side, but I've um, sort of one step leads to another and I'm thinking, oh, I might as well grab this or I might as well grab that. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to hang around and grab what you can and I'm going to take the sink out. I wasn't going to, but really for five minutes work, um, it's, look, stainless steel isn't worth a fortune, but I think I'd get much better money selling it as a sink. It's a nice long one. It's in pretty good condition. So, you know, I might get 40 or $50 for that. And it took five minutes. So why am I going to leave that? Uh, I might just break the tiles out and grab the the uh, plumbing assembly behind there that'll be all brass i think i've got the copper pipes from behind that so and i'm just walking around grabbing any lengths of wire i can uh, in the front rooms i took out some power points and i dragged the wire down through the wall because i'd clipped it up at the top uh, i haven't been to this roof up here and it's a flat roof so the wiring will have to stay in that section so as i keep saying i'm just about done but who knows what i'll spot before i go and for those that were wondering, yes, I pulled the cord out of the vacuum and clipped that off. I'm going to get quite a lot of wire out of this place. So I've got the sink out. And come on, how many of you would let me have your holiday house? You know, I leave things pretty neat. Surely I could uh, come and stay for a while. Look at that. Swept up in the lounge room. I'd be a good tenant, honest. Okay, all jokes aside. What have we got to go? I think I've actually finished in here. I just can't afford any more time here. The only other thing I'm going to do is just have a look around the back. Uh, still waiting on someone to pick this furniture up. If they don't pick it up, it's going to go. I just can't help it. I've tried. Can't do any more than that. I might grab some of these lengths of pipe, but I can grab these at a later date. I don't have the trailer with me today. Uh, there's an outdoor toilet around here that I'm just going to have a bit of a look at. I get through this wire fence here and sometimes there's nothing in there that I want it's just a plastic system some of the old ones are actually brass and there's no really exposed copper pipe that's a girl pipe 
and I've been down that side. Oh, there's a bit of pipe down here. I think we'll just grab this last little bit here. That feeds the bathroom. So that'll be all copper pipe and brass fittings. So I'll just undo the fittings at the wall and um, just break the copper off. It breaks really easy when you bend it back and forward. And that'll do me. I'll um, get home. We'll sort all the scrap and I'll weigh it up. Give you an idea what value we got. And I'll show you the bottles that we found. Wash, I'll wash them up. And also the retro light fittings from the first part. So we'll give you a look and a conclusion at the end of it all. Sorry, I was just backing down there. It's a bit awkward to do. And uh, that will conclude our video on what we can salvage from the house. Okay, guys, I'm having a day at the shop today, just out the backyard, sorting out some stuff. And we need to finalise all this cottage um, materials that we saved, that we rescued from landfill. And I know you're probably going to be interested to see what sort of value we saved. But I'm happy with the quantity. I banned myself from going back there. I'm not sure if the place has been demolished yet. I just can't afford the time to go back again. I found in the evenings I was thinking, oh, did I check in the cupboard or, you know, should I have got the window and down the south side? Anyway, I've, I've got to draw a line. So let's have a look at the notepad and see how we went as far as what sort of return we'll get out of it. We'll start with these retro lights, uh, the ones from the front rooms. They cleaned up really well, as you can see. Uh, very happy with those. There's no real damage. The wiring looks okay. You can buy the tubes for these still. So um, I put 125 on that one there. And I went for 95 on the round one. So pretty happy with those. I think they'll sell quite well. So onto the notepad. We had a total of 215 for the lights. Uh, the flywire doors you'd seen um, in the first part. I went 50-50 for the wrought iron ones and the timber one I put 30 so that's 130 for the doors I haven't had to do anything with those uh, the bubble glass I've just got some of it here there was this bigger sheet that was above the door and then there was four panels in the door I've washed them up they cleaned up really good I'm going to put $20 each on the smaller panels and 30 on the big panel so that's 80, it's 110. Now, that's something that's going to need, obviously, someone who wants it. Uh, if customers don't want this, they're not going to buy it, and it wouldn't matter what price I had. I could have a dollar a sheet. And if you don't actually need it, why would you buy it? But the person that wants it to replace something that they've got the same at home, you just can't find this stuff. So I think that you can almost name your price, as Rick had told me. But I'm going to be... Fairly conservative and just price them at $20 a sheet and $30 for the bigger one. Now the deco door handle is here. Um, I cleaned it up a little bit. It's um, it's really nice. I like it. And I like the way it comes apart. There's little grub screws which allow the that part that spins to come off. And then you screw that into the door and then you fit the handle and do the grub screw up. So I really, really like that. I reckon we're going to put $25 on that one. And again, someone that's got an Art Deco place that wants something like that, they'll see that as a bargain. But if you've got a modern house, you know, you wouldn't pay a dollar for it. So pricing is very subjective. Uh, 25 we'll put on that. The Yale latch is just here. I didn't actually get the keeper for it. Um, I just completely forgot about it, but I've got plenty in the shed. So, um, And I didn't get the lock part because that'll be fine on a shed. Uh, I'll put 10 on that. I'll find a keeper with it and we'll put 10 on that. And the washing machine taps are just here. Uh, they're nice and clean. They're heavy brass ones. They're chromed brass. So I don't know what you'd pay from them at a hardware store, but I wouldn't think they'd be cheap. I'm just going to put 10 on the pair. And the other tap, this was the fresh water tap that was in the kitchen. And again, the chrome's in good condition. It's nice and heavy. It's solid brass. And it has got the, um, the little backing plate with it. So I'll just put 10 on that as well. Um, it's pointless throwing those things. Well, it's not pointless, but it would be a shame to throw them in the scrap brass when I can get more than twice brass value just selling them as, as taps. Uh, next on the list, the fry pan. I didn't show you this. I found it in one of the, the cupboards. It's um, it's a really heavy. It's enameled. It's in pretty good condition. The handle's solid. There's no chips, no bad staining to the surface. I would imagine that would have been a very expensive fry pan 
to buy new and I saw a lot of fry pans and things to campers around here it's probably even too good for that but I reckon we'll put $20 on that and see how we go I can always discount it down the track but it's in very good condition so $20 that was a little bonus in one of the cupboards the strip heater that's just here now I did clean it up it looks really cool it's quite a retro piece it almost matches those lights um, it's got a pull string switch and the switch works but I plugged it in I can't quite pull it one hand I plugged it in and whilst it tested safe the element actually didn't light up so I think the element must be burned it is a bit dark at one end so I think it's been blown I'm not sure if you can get them or not but uh, it's a cool piece I'm going to put $10 on it in the shop and we'll just see how we go I'm sure someone will be able to find an element for it somewhere uh, the kitchen sink is around the side. You saw me getting that out. I put 40 on that one. The little coat hook I've got here. It's actually a really nice Art Nouveau design. It's cast iron. And a lot of people ask me for coat hooks because they've got a hall stand or, or hat rack or something. And because these are cast iron, they're quite brittle. And especially if someone's moving house and you just knock that on a doorway, it'll snap it off. So I do get a lot of people asking to replace ones that they've broken uh, I have seen that pattern before. It's not super rare, but it's a nice pattern. So anyone that was replacing a broken one, I'd easily pay 10 for that. But I'm just going to put five, and I'll put it in a box I've got in the shed with a heap of others. Eventually, I might make up sets. We'll just put five for now. Now, the copper wire, the brass, the copper, candy copper, number two copper. We'll go through the scrap in a minute. The street light. Now, I didn't show you this either. When I climbed up on the roof... To have a look inside that gable and clip out some wire this was near the carport and it only had one bolt holding it in and it was very wobbly so i just sort of leant on it and it fell off i had clipped the wire the wire went into the wall i'm not going to test it um, but i think i'd get 20 for it as a vintage street light even if they don't go they're relatively easy to fix um, you can buy those size tubes still so 20 dollars for the street light a little bit of a bonus again uh, the bottles I'll go through in a second. The trailer is still loaded with the boards. Uh, the sheets of plywood are in my shed. I'm going to use that to line a section of my shed. And the big mantelpiece is in my shed uh, just to use because it's a nice nice slab of timber. I'm not sure. It'll be handy one day, as they say. And the louver shutters are still on the trailer too. So I think the shutters are quite... They're hardwood. They're quite strong and, and sturdy. But I think we'll just put... Oh, look, we'll just put 20 on the lot. Someone will grab them. I don't want to move them around too long. Um, a quick sale is a good sale as far as those guys. I wasn't going to take them at all. It's only that Rick took them off to get to the weatherboards that I ended up with them. I'm not going to price the boards and the ply and the mantel because they're for my projects down the track. But the boards, if I was to sell them, I would, oh, look, I would estimate there's $500 worth of hardwood flooring there. I haven't measured it. I don't know how many linear meters it is, but... They're all pretty strong. There's no bad pieces or very few bad sections. There's some really nice long lengths. So really good value for that, but I will keep those for future projects. Now we'll go through the bottles next. And here's our wonderful treasures from under the house, all washed up. Um, the broken cod bottles this end. Uh, I like to clean these up to see if they're a version that I haven't got because there are lots of different varieties. And for those of you that have been scratching your head all video or all series on what a cod bottle is, here's a complete one. So they have a marble in the top, so they rattle, and the marble is the stopper, and you'll see it sits in the neck there. And we did find a piece of one with a rubber seal in there, which the marble presses against. And to open it, you had to push the marble in so it drops down. And I will do a video on cod bottles at some stage. I have to get back to my series on antique bottles. But that's what a cod bottle is. They're also called marble bottles. Um, and they were invented in 18... Oh, geez, testing my memory. 1870-something by Hiram Cod in the UK, I think. But I will do some history and information on cod bottles at some stage. So they're unfortunately not worth anything, but I just wanted to make sure they were varieties that I already had. And this sandblasted one, uh, I've got two broken ones now. So I'd love to find a complete one. Uh, moving along, there's the marble out of the cod bottle. Uh, 
The eucalyptus oil is a nice crude early one, but the top's off it, so there's no real value there. I'll probably put that in the recycle bin. Very, very attractive bottle all the same, but I have got one of those. Uh, the little chemist here, I suggested it might turn purple in the sun, and I'll do a video on why some bottles turn purple at some stage. You can see it's got a ground glass uh, neck in there. It's supposed to have a little glass stopper to go in it, but we didn't find that. But that's a $5 bottle. I have got a box of stoppers. We might fluke it that gets one to fit in there. Um, this little Melbourne chemical bottle is a really nice one. Now, I have seen these before, as I mentioned, but this one's a nice early one, really nice colour, bold embossing, nice crude looking neck. So that's a great bottle. I'm going to put 10 on that. Not particularly rare, but a really nice example. These little essence bottles, they're all applied lip ones, so they're nice and early. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you better check out my bottle uh, antique bottle playlist, and I explain how to date bottles. So these ones are all pre-1920, probably around about 1900. And I might put, I'll put $3 each on those. They're very, very common, but they do look nice, and they cleaned up quite well. Little cabin ink. Uh, is not broken, that's what they call the sheer top, that's how they were made, and that one's in pretty good condition, it cleaned up really well, uh, we'll put five on that one, we might even put a little bit more, it's a good example. The plain eucalyptus oil here, we'll just put five on, it's a nice early one, but no embossing. This was the very first bottle I found, and I thought it was a bit older than it is, but it's probably around 1930s, maybe late 20s, and it's a Devonport olive oil and it has got a top that is machine made so that puts it a little bit later than the other ones the um, scrubs ammonia cleaned up really nice it's what they'd call an ice blue beautiful color uh, no damage at all but they are quite a common bottle they were a, a, an ammonia as i said like a disinfectant we'll get 10 for that though because it's a nice example and the beautiful blue cobalt blue castor oil bottle is the best bottle we found out of a lot uh, really nice rich dark blue some nice marks in the glass it's not damaged that's just how it was made and what's it say on the bottom uh, five ounce so it i will get 20 for that without any problems it's a cork top nice and crude great example there so we did have a bit of luck with our bottles we just couldn't couldn't pull out a complete cod bottle maybe next time so I'll go through and add those up again and we'll add our total to the list. And the bottles added up to around about $70, give or take a few bucks. Depends what I feel like when I'm pricing them. So that's not bad for lifting floorboards. Uh, so all we have left is the scrap items. Now the insulated copper wire weighed out at 16 kilos once we cleaned all that up. And it's paying an exceptional $3.50. So that's $56. The burnt, what I call burnt wire, is actually this. It's not really burnt. It's just um, it's copper without any insulation, but not not milbury, not um, bare bright. So we had one kilo of that, and it's around about nine dollars a kilo at the moment. So copper's really good at the moment. Uh, the brass we had six kilos, and it's about six dollars, a little bit over. So again, that's excellent. Reflects the good copper price. Uh, the candy copper, which is um, nice clean copper pipe pieces. Uh, and whilst I'm down here, that um, goes as number two copper. It's anything that's corroded or got some solder joints or paint. And then we have a tub of brass, which we've just listed. So the candy copper, we had one kilo, and I think that's around about $9 again. I'm going to stick with round figures. The number two or the painted copper we had four kilos and i think it's about eight dollars so there's 32 dollars so it was certainly worth collecting the copper pipe uh, aluminium extrusion i'm not going to weigh that there's only a few um, pieces of really the the cover strips over the edge of the carpet it's under a kilo so oh look we could probably put a dollar because extruded's paying fairly well at the moment for the sake of a figure let's put a dollar and I'm not going to put a figure in for the boards, even though there's a lot of value there. So let's add that list up. And we get a grand total of $838, which I think is phenomenal. Of course, we have to sell the stuff. The scrap metal will be fine. We can cash that in any time, and the prices might even keep going up. 
Uh, some of the bigger items here, well, I'm happy to leave the retro lights hang around for a while. They look great. I'm sure we'll find buyers for those. The doors, look, I might discount the doors a bit if they get in my road, but basically I think all that stuff, you know, the bubble glass, we will need to wait for the right person to come along. But all that stuff I think is pretty reasonably priced and that's going to be a really good return on our time. And not to mention that we still, don't forget that we still have all those boards at home. So a great score. We Our motivation was to keep stuff out of landfill, but we ended up making some pretty good dollars for our time. We had a lot of fun. We almost found some good bottles. Well, we found some reasonable ones. We got some scrap. We did a bit of everything and we've got some good materials at home for future projects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's um, It kind of made its own way. I didn't know where it was going to go when we started. So let me know if you like these adventures. Uh, it covers a lot of things we do and the motivation, as I keep saying, was keeping the stuff out of landfill. I devoted a lot more time to it than I was planning to, but it made a couple of nice videos. So give us some feedback on that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the new subscribers that have been popping in lately. I'm hoping my channel can keep jumping ahead. I have a lot of plans for it. So uh, stay tuned. We'll see you soon.